that was different. That was different and in a very, very good way. And that sucked. That resembled the Panthers in the second period. Unorganized is didn't really sound right and and just awful. But in any case, Bruins fans, it is time to get out because that is a four to two victory over the over the Florida Panthers. Here's here's putting us back in the series lead at two to one. Welcome back to Into the Den. Welcome back. You know, really didn't expect last game to turn out the way that it did, but I'm happy that this game happened because because uh, now we can just we can just look back on uh, on last game as the proper kick in the ass that we needed, except that last except for the last part. In fact, let's talk about that last part because uh, because I didn't even re finish recording. Uh, because I finished recording before the Bruins even got the third uh, their third goal. I didn't even finish uh, I didn't even finish the uh, the game hadn't even finished when I finished recording. And oh boy, a lot happened in that last 3 seconds. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Trent Frederick starts to fight with uh, with Ryan Lombard and uh, Frederick kicks the shit out of him and but still gets taken to the ground. Uh, still gets taken to the ground, and Lombard decides the proper course of action is to choke Trent Frederick. To freaking choke my guy. And Frederick, he is flailing, he is, he is like, I cannot breathe, and he is, uh, and he reportedly was fucking fuming going down the tunnel. I understand. I understand. Getting choked sucks. But that's not the only thing that sucked last night. The uh, last game, the other thing that sucked, uh, other than the fact that we lost, uh, was uh, was the fact that it, Matthew Kachuk decided it was going to be a good idea to call uh, to call Tomas Nosek's wife a whore. Yeah, no, that's not that is not cool. Usually, 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 whenever you hear chirps, people would, people would typically uh, make it stick to uh, to like a. a just player to player. They barely ever bring up, uh, uh they barely ever bring up, uh, like stuff that it happens within their family. Family. That's why the Trevor Zegris thing to Troy Stetcher, uh, that's why the Trevor Zegris is, is, is trip to Troy Stetcher was so, it was so egregious earlier this season. Yeah. Because usually when you're chirping between players, you don't, bring up family you can bring up any any number of other things i know i think kachuk was actually the uh, person to uh, to ask uh, to ask evander kane you want some money a few uh, like last season during the playoffs yes, and i loved that uh another really dicey one was it uh, was last year uh, uh who was it martian ended up uh, telling uh, telling uh he ended up saying to to Artemi Panarin, and nobody in Canada likes you. Oh, nobody in nobody in Russia likes you. Oh, and that ended up getting in, getting him a glove to the face. Not not like not one that was still attached to Panarin's in his hand. Panarin took off his glove and threw it at Marchand's face over the bench. It was a, it was crazy. But usually you keep it to you keep it between in. And whoever's on the ice, yeah, you, you keep it between and whoever you're facing. You don't bring up their bring their family into it. Yeah. And that, and for that, Matthew Chuck kindly fucked right off. Anyway, in in terms of injury news, uh, Krejci is out for this game. He he did not play. Uh, meaning Nick Foligno is in, in, and uh, and after uh, and it turns out that. And Patrice Bergeron is not going to be going to be playing until Game Five. Now, a lot of people were having an, a conversation about uh, about uh, Game Eighty Two uh, during the uh, uh, while this was happening. Ing. Ing. Game Eighty Two, Patrice Bergeron uh, plays in the last game of the season. Really doesn't need to, but he still ends up. Uh, but he ends up playing. 
and he ends up getting hurt in this game, in the last game of the season. Honestly, it's no one's fault. It's no one's fault. It's not Jim Montgomery's fault for going for playing Patrice Bergeron, and it's not Patrice Bergeron's fault for going for playing. Because, let's be honest, that was probably the last... Eh, that would likely be the last game that Patrice Bergeron plays in is in front of his home in front of his his hometown. Now I know you could grow up in Quebec, but Montreal is the club. Montreal is the next best thing because there's no Nordiques. And you're not just gonna and you're not just gonna bench some bench your captain for and because they because they want to play in the you're not just gonna bench your captain in the last game of the season. And, and, and with something like this, and, and with against a against a bottom feeder of a team, when you're the fucking when you're the fucking Stanley uh, the President's Trophy winner, you're not just gonna uh, bench them, um, if uh, if it's something like this, if it is something like, like this, I may never got I may never get this opportunity again. And, and honestly, I feel like that's, I feel like eh, that might be a, eh, that's, I feel like that's a, eh, that might be a good mentality to have, to have for a hockey player. Eh, that's sort of just the mentality you have uh, whenever you're, whenever you're playing a sport, whether it's the first nurse game you're playing or your thousandth. Mm. I may never get this opportunity again. Mm. And so, uh, and Patrice Bergeron, God bless you, man. God bless you. My favorite player of all time, Patrice Bergeron. I would uh, I would not want to and to inhibit him from playing that game. And I don't, and Jim Montgomery didn't want to uh, do it. Patrice Bergeron didn't want to do it. It, it. And somehow we're having this whole conversation about it. And hey, the Bruins are up 2-1 on the Panthers. Deal with it. But the last pe the last uh, shifting around of the of the uh, of the uh, of the lineup, uh, with Krejci out and uh, with Krejci and Bergeron out, we get uh, we get freaking we get who is it? We get Felino and Jacob Lauko in his first game, in his first uh, postseason in game of his career, uh, but not out for injury. We have uh, we have a uh, we have Connor Clifton out, which means Matt Grizzlick is in, and who boy Matt Grizzlick was in. So, before the puck drops, like, comment, and subscribe. Helps out with the algorithm. Help, uh, helps me grow my channel. And anyway, puck drops, and the Bruins come out swinging. Last, uh, the end of last game, really, really lit a fire under their ass because uh, they start uh, the scoring two minutes, 20 se uh, 26 seconds in. Dmitry Orlov. I had, a, I had a bunch of bad things to say about Orlov uh, after last game. Um, I even called into some into the Something's Brewing, Brewing podcast saying that we should uh, saying that Grizzly sh should be in and take Orlov out, huh. but Orlov, who boy, he uh he showed himself uh, to be worthy of the lineup this game, um, with two assists of, of pretty much the same caliber. He ends up uh, he uh, Orlov launches from his own uh, from like. The left side faceoff dot uh, on the Bruins end to the top of the neutral zone for uh, for Taylor Hall. Uh, Taylor Hall uh, is right up against the defenseman. He he puts it to his back uh, foot uh, and like angles it so that uh, so that uh, the defender is still skating backwards uh, so he has room um, to shoot and just puts it right past Alex Lyon. One zero Bruins and the bro. Uh, and one thing that really caught at me is that even though the Bruins didn't score on the power play uh, all this game, their power play looked pretty good. Their power play looked pretty good. It didn't, like I said, it didn't score anything, but it still ended up being uh, being something that uh, that like was able to generate momentum. Um, something that like our third line you, is usually really good at. And speaking of our third line, Charlie Coyle. Oh man, Charlie Coyle. I think honestly this might have been one of Charlie Coyle's best games. Best games this season, and he worked his ass off. He was so good in our zone, um, and easily had the most complete game of anybody on the Bruins tonight. Like, uh, okay, 
okay. Maybe not of all Bruins, and probably of just off uh, of just uh, forwards because defensemen. Oh boy, this was a good one for the defensemen. McAvoy had a fantastic game. Orlov had a fantastic game. Grizzly first game of the playoffs for him. <laughs> fantastic game from Grizzly. Like Mac uh, Mon Monty put forty eight on the goddamn power play. And honestly, uh, honestly. I know Grizzly ended up having a uh, a pretty mid, a pretty not great uh, thing in the third period. Uh, he ends up as the he ends up as the sole, as the one on the two on one from uh, from Gustav For from Gustav Forsling and uh, uh, and Ichu Lusarainen and on a shorthanded breakaway and <clears throat> and they end up scoring. Honestly, that shouldn't. Uh, honestly, that doesn't uh, do anything for me. I know. I know it's not great to let in the shorthanded goal, but honestly, as we've seen from last game, uh, as we've seen from last game, uh, in this series, a shorthanded goal just means that. Uh, it just means that. All right. Yep. We we have this so much in the bag that we're uh, that we're just gonna kick back and relax for the next few. Uh, okay. Maybe it doesn't mean that much. Maybe it doesn't mean that little, but it. But it more so means that uh, that like uh, you're up by enough to where uh, to where you can hand them a uh, to where you can afford uh, you can afford a goal oh, scored on you even if it's uh, even if it is shorthanded. Yeah, that's sort of what I mean. Is that it, 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 usually when teams are letting up shorthand goals oh, in this series? Is it means that they're up by enough to where, er, to where they can afford it. But Grizzly, Grizzly played fantastic this game, um, and os eh, like honestly, his uh, he was really really good at clearing the puck. He could, eh, he could send, eh, he could clear the puck. He could eh, keep the puck in. He was great in the neutral zone. Fantastic two hundred foot game from, eh, from Grizzly. Something else that was funny in the second period, Matthew Kachuk tried the Michigan and got absolutely butt blasted. He uh, he could not do it. Uh, he got shut down. It was funny. Anyway, Orlov. <coughs> anyway, a little bit into the third period and like halfway through, he ends up uh, Orlov ends up doing the exact same thing that he did for uh, for uh, uh for Taylor Hall. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot in the second, in the, also in the first period. Uh, actually no, this was in the second period. Oops, oops. Uh, uh, Martian, uh, Martian immediately off of a faceoff, uh, does some puck possession, uh, does some funky puck possession. I'm sorry that I, I'm sorry that I mentioned the third period. I'm uh, back back on my exhibit A shit. Exhibit A, fantastic brewery in, in Framingham. I worked there, I worked there beer garden for a little bit back back in like 2021. It was great. I love it. Hey, go check out Exhibit A Brewery. Hey, they make some great shit, like uh, like what I'm drinking right now, Panda Punch Kettle Sour, or er, er, made with passion fruit, pink guava, oranges, and hibiscus. Uh, Exhibit A, sponsor me. Hey, hey, sponsor me. I like your beer. Uh, yeah, Martian does some funky puck possession, and and uh, a little bit off the face up. Uh, uh, which is weird because it's usually Coil that does it, but but speaking of Coil, he shoots it towards the middle, and Coil is right there to uh, uh, with a stick to bat it out of the air, uh, right down past uh, uh, Alex Lyons five hole, oh two zero Bruins. Now the most frustrating part of the second period was easily it uh, was easily the two one zero opportunity. Uh, Taylor Hall and David Pasenak uh, on a uh, with a fant uh, with a brilliant opportunity, uh, Taylor Hall. How do you uh, how do you mess this up? He misjudges the amount of backwards pressure, uh, the amount of pressure behind him, um, gets the puck stolen away from him by uh, Ryan Lomberg. Fuck Ryan Lomberg. Bruins and Panthers pay trade penalties. Like I said, nobody uh, nobody scores on the power play this game. Uh, actually, no. Uh, uh, te technically, someone does score on the power play, but it's more so a penalty penalty kill. Anyway. Uh, uh, third period starts the, 
Uh, so like I said, uh, and I was as I was about to say before I ended up talking about the uh, the coil goal. Uh, uh freaking Orlov, fantastic, uh, fantastic game from him. He does pretty much the same thing thing that he did on the hall goal. He fires it from from pretty much the face off dot. First of all, fantastic, fantastic puck possession from uh, from Tyra Bertuzzi. This was great from him. And he has the puck against the boards with two Panthers defense with two Panthers players there's right on him um, and he just uh, squirts it out to uh, to Orlov and from the faceoff dot again he uh, he launches it all the way to the top of the neutral zone who's there David Pasnak Pasnak uh, Pasnak bursts into the the offensive zone and five holes almost Alex Lyon for the three zero goal and it was at this moment that uh, Paul Maurice knew he fucked up how did he know he fucked up? He ends up pulling Alex Lyon for Sergei Bobrovsky. <laughs> Woo! It's never a good idea to, uh, to it's never a good idea to pull your goal. It's never great to it's never a great feeling to pull, to have to pull your goalie, especially in the playoffs because honestly it, it because is I was I was listening to something to the Something's Brewing podcast from um, Black and Gold Productions. By the way, I am no longer affiliated with Black and Gold Productions. I, uh, after a really tumultuous week for uh, for me for mental health reasons, uh, I could not meet their one an article per uh, per week deadline uh, quota. I ended up being let go, unfortunate, but just the way things go. Make got to make sure that got to make sure that uh, that. Shit's good between uh, between the ears, ears, you know. Oh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, I was listening to something from a podcast, uh, and uh, they were talking about how, oh, uh, they uh, about how, uh, even though people want to uh, question whether you uh, whether you pull all uh, Mark and put in Swayman for Game Three, that's not it. I don't think that's really. It's not really a great idea because it, it because it, it kind of fucks with the uh, goalie's mojo. And I know the Bruins have uh, the Bruins have a glut of uh, of goaltending depth to be able to do this. They have uh, they have Allmark. They have uh, Swayman. If need be, they can do what the, the Penguins did and put in in a fucking AHL goalie. Brandon Bussy, fantastic player. The the best rookie goalie in the entire AHL. They could do that and uh, and be fine, mm. but you don't want to do that because uh, because it messes with a uh, because it messes with a uh, uh, with a goalie's mojo. It messes with their flow for the rest of the. Uh, it could potentially mess with their flow for the rest of the season. They start getting in their own head, their own head about it. Goalies are kind of weird, you know, Patrick. Uh, Patrick Bob used to used to thank ink his goalposts and uh, and scold uh, and scold them. Uh, goalies are very superstitious. I know hockey players are also really superstitious. Connor McDavid, oh my God, change your fucking socks, my guy. But goalies, mo- most of all, and you don't want to mess with their uh, you don't want to mess with their mojo. So uh, so well, pulling Alex Lyon for Sergei Bobrovsky. Who knows if this is going to be a thing that sticks with the rest of the series. I kind of hope that it does because it means that the Panthers are running out of options. But that also means that I'm running out of time for you know, for editing that video. Fuck! Now, Ryan, L- Ryan Lomberg ends up going for hooking. The Panthers kill it, but the Bruins, Bruins generate so much momentum that they're able to uh, score less than like <clears throat> less than 30, I think even less than 20 seconds after this, uh, this penalty expires. There's Hall just bursts into the uh, Hall just bursts into the offensive zone on right past Radko Gudis, who has been a goon all this entire this entire series. Radko Gudis, by the way, uh, one of the last remaining goons in this uh, in the uh, in the entire NHL. Well, honestly, I'd put him up with Tom Wilson as one of the dirtiest players in the league. I don't know. That might just be that might just be me. But uh, but uh, but Hall just makes an Hall just makes a freaking example out of him. Uh, he bursts past him um, and backhands it to uh, to Felino, who uh, who's just skating right past 
uh, past Bobrovsky, eh, and he and he adjusts himself to backhand it into the eh, into the goal for nothing. Now come now comes the ridiculousness of the last ten minutes of the game. Charlie McAvoy ends up uh, putting a very very legal hit on I think Ryan Lomberg. And Sasha Barkov decides, you know what I'm going to do after this? I'm going to grab McAvoy from behind, and wrapping my arm around his neck, and take him to the ground. The Panthers just love choking. And hey, that's not, that's not a problem. I don't mind, I don't mind people who are into that. But it's, it, but please, for the love of God, there are children in attendance do not put your kinks on uh, on national television like this. It's just not a good look, and especially not a and especially not a good look because he end up going into the box for two minutes for roughing. Now that's not the only penalty on uh, on here. Er, Tyler Bertuzzi and Brandon Montour they are done for the night after this game uh, after this because uh, they end up going for uh, for ten minute misconduct penalties is for their uh, for their antics with each other after the. Uh, after the whistle. By the way, Brandon Montour, absolute worst player in the ice tonight. He, uh, the only time I ever heard his name was when he was, uh, was when he was fucking up. But, uh, but during in this in this power play for the Bruins for uh, for Barkov's, uh, it was roughing. This is when the for, this is when the two on one happens uh, with Lusseran with Lusseran and then, uh, and Lomberg versus uh, versus Grizzly. Grizzly eh, can't defend it, and uh, and Lomberg scores. Big whoop, four one. Not only four one, four one with less than uh, with less than uh, five minutes to play. Now, into the Ford F one fifty final five. Let's actually put this up. Into the Ford F one fifty final five. The you know, the Panthers actually the you know, Panthers pull Sergey Bobrovsky with less than. With four and a half minutes left, which honestly kind of makes sense because you're down three and you, it's the playoffs. You know, it's, you, desperate times call for de desperate times call for desperate measures. Holy crap! This is a six point one, and I've only had one of these. What the hell? Anyway, off the faceoff, the Panthers uh, just put the puck on, uh, put the puck on Allmark, and and end up pushing it into the net. But there's an early whistle. For some reason, this still stands. Let's not forget that this say, uh, that Tyler Bertuzzi had a goal called back because of an early whistle, well, well, during the regular season. And Austin Matthews had that exact same goal allowed. And now, I forget who scored this one because I honestly just don't care. I forget who had this one scored. They get it. Uh, this goal stays. So why is it only the Bruins? Doesn't matter. It's four two. It's four two with less than four minutes left to go. Oh, we should be fine. And hey, we are fine. Yeah, there's a lot of broken sticks on the ice after the uh, in the last uh, four minutes, and uh, it's in coil. Uh, and coil goes for an empty net uh, goal, which almost gets scored, but Sasha Barkov is there to. And it just corral the puck out of the out of the crease. Big whoop. It's a four two win. You end up winning. And honestly, it's what we needed to do tonight. I mean realistically it's the playoffs. It's what we need to do every night. Every night that we play. But but it's what we needed to do tonight because if we didn't, we're in trouble for next game. We would be in trouble for next game. I mean, sure, it's the playoffs. We we should probably take every single game seriously. And we do. We do take every game seriously. But after the last game, we needed a rebound. And this was a good rebound. And this is the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys Sunday afternoon. Take care.